Hey everyone, got a special treat today. I got a uh, DJI Matrice 300 with an H20 camera and an X-T2 thermal. We're gonna fly it. All right, here she is boxed up. It has been flown before. I was lucky enough, uh, my work wanted me to bring this home and uh, do a little bit of flying for it. Check it out, get some uh, time on it. We're using it on an upcoming job. So, tell me to go ahead and grab the thermal camera, which is the uh, X-T2. It's a 640 thermal, and I think it's a 20 megapixel. And then we've got the H20, which is the replacement for the... Uh... All right, here's the Matrice 300. In case uh, you don't know anything about this, this is the uh, replacement for the uh, 210 version two, and particularly the 600. Um, it is bigger than the 200, not quite as big as the 600. It has uh, large motors, much like the 600 does, and 21-inch props. So, very similar propulsion system. Except for this is running off of a 50-volt battery. It's got two of them in there. Batteries for this thing are very expensive. About $800 a piece. Um, but, it's supposed to have a 50-minute flight time without a payload, like 45 minutes with payload. Uh, you've got LiDAR, forward cameras, FPV-type camera. Um, it's got visual sensors and LiDAR sensors all the way around for obstacle avoidance and position holding. Uh, it's supposed to be a very sweet flying aircraft. I've never flown it, and that's what we're going to do today. This isn't going to be a comprehensive review. Uh, if you want one of those, they probably got plenty of them on uh, YouTube, but this is just going to be kind of checking it out, make a cool little video. Uh, not every day you get to fly some really cool stuff. I'm, I'm very lucky that we do get to fly some really cool stuff at times. So this is an RTK model. As you can see, you've got, here's your uh, remote antennas on the front. And they used to have them front and rear. You can see there's two GPS modules on each side. I'm assuming there may be one up here. I'm not 100% certain. Um, but definitely there's two GPS there. It is RTK enabled from the factory. Uh, this is not a cheap. So this is the controller that it uses. This is a uh, enterprise version of the smart controller designed just for the Matrice 300 RTK. It's a little different. You got a big battery pack here on the back. So far, I seem to like it. The screen's pretty bright. So we'll see how this works out. I was planning on doing a quick takeoff with this thing, but once again, DJI strikes. Um, because the H20 has never been flown, you got to have an internet connection to register it. I think it's one of the things that DJI really needs to move away from. Um, Take off. I'm going to bring her in a little closer so you can see. This thing is sturdy. The wind's blowing pretty good right now. And, uh, they get a high wind velocity warning. I was up about 300 foot, and uh, which is pretty, pretty high. Wind's blowing. It's gusting 20 on the ground now. It makes you really want to get the lidar sensor on my big one. We're gonna have a comparison video on the two there. We push it a little bit closer here. Good video of it flying. You can see you got go back to the main camera. I'm still recording here. I'm gonna zoom out. Get a wide zoom. You can see the gimbal, you get full control, even in single op mode, up and down, side to side. H20 camera. Trying to figure out how the it's got a laser range finder. I'm trying to figure out how that exactly works on this thing. Oh, there we go, ranging. Oh yeah, 155 meters. Let's zoom in on the house. Good 
this digital zoom at 40 x but even a digital zoom, it's really, really good. Switch back and forth between wide angle. Zoom. I'm gonna stop the video on the aircraft. 82% battery. Display on. You see, I'm gonna go ahead and land it. I'll bring it up here. As you can see, the props are splayed out. That's for stability. And you can see that it actually, they're on the bottom. Most of the weights up top, those two 12S 50 volt batteries up top, make it top heavy. And it's kind of weird how it rocks back, but I guess it help, kind of helps it stop quicker. It seems like. like you're coming in, it's very stable. It's interesting. Forward, you don't have nearly as much. Yaw rate's really nice. So is your climb rate. A little faster than the one I built. I can set that. I still got to play with settings. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and land it. Landing override. She's down. Motor stopped. Man, I'm quite impressed with this thing this is a uh, this is a pretty amazing uh, aircraft here all right now I've got the XT2 on this thing and uh, we're gonna check out the thermal see how it does H20 is a really nice camera um, this thing is very stable I'm, I'm quite impressed with it this is a hell of a drone if I, uh, if I could use this to make some serious money I would not hesitate to drop the kind of money they want for this thing on it the batteries are crazy expensive though so all right i'm ready to go i'm going to go ahead and uh, arm the motors here and then we'll take off and uh once we take off um i'll switch back and forth between this camera view and the actual uh thermal and rgb on the uh on the drone army motors Motor's armed, taking off. Alright, got some wind, holding good. That looks fine. Ops check. Ops are normal. Alright, I'm just going to let it hover there. We're going to look at the, uh, the thermal here. Actually, I'm flipping around. Seems I'm having a problem switching between the thermal and the visible. Right, I'm going to land it. Make sure this camera is done correctly. Last thing I want to do is have an $18,000 camera falling off the bottom of this thing. All right, so I'm back in business. Um, kind of interesting. I went to the uh, thermal camera and I had an issue where I could no longer control the gimbal and I couldn't switch back. None of the buttons were starting to work. Um, Kind of an odd thing now this thing does have a firmware update and this camera probably has a firmware update and i have a feeling this camera doesn't get used a whole lot i have a feeling that the the firmwares are probably not uh, where they're supposed to be to really be working together so that could be an issue so i don't want to you know just assume that an eighteen thousand dollar camera is a, a pos but all right so i want to take a couple of minutes here um 
in doing the M300 review, it was kind of a short review, just kind of going over the aircraft. Um, we had problems with the X-T2 camera. The biggest problem was it kept locking up. And inevitably, I did not get the video that I wanted with the X-T2 to incorporate into the video of the review. So, what had happened was the M300 had a firmware update instead of the X-T2 and that actually fixed the problem so I was able to get it working um, because of rain that came in and needing that drone for a job at work it's now back at work I haven't had a chance to bring it back home and do some more flights with it I may be able to do that this week and if that happens then I'll be able to get everything together for you but uh, so what kind of want to give you a heads up um, I've got some content coming up. One of the things I wanted to go over, there's a lot of problems online with people losing aircraft. Um, a couple of different reasons for it, mechanical faults, um, especially DJI products flying near DJI SSI zones. And a lot of people don't understand how DJI sets those SSI zones up. And if you don't know that, it can lead you to losing an aircraft very quickly or running into problems. And there's actually a thing that we do as commercial drone pilots that keep you from having that issue. At least gives you an understanding that that might be a problem and we can alleviate it before it becomes an issue. So I'll go over that. I'm going to do a real short video on that, maybe three or four minutes long. And that's going to be for any drone pilot out there or anybody looking to get into flying drones. A quick tip on how you know and you can see spot mechanical faults you can spot battery problems and you can spot uh, geo zone or lockout zones problems before it becomes an issue so and I think that's really important a lot of people have lost aircraft and uh, when that happens it's not a good thing so um, I want to make it to where people can fly these things and enjoy it whether they're doing recreational or they're doing commercial work but have a better understanding and there's not a whole lot of information that DJI puts out on that stuff you just see the red zone on the map and that's it so um, that's what we'll probably go over in the next video so and I'll kind of give an, an understanding on, on how to alleviate that problem so